Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This video is going to be kind of a follow-up to one of my earlier and most popular videos. I'm not sure why, but uh, that was called DIY Linear Actuator, and I did that little project and video for the boat pond on the lock chamber doors. And uh, this is sort of an application of that, and it works really good here. Um, and that act that that project actually turned out just fine I need to do it again and make them bigger and do all four doors anyway um, here's the dump truck and this is where this actuator is in use I've got everything powered up here I'm gonna go ahead and raise the box up so I can show you guys what's going on in here and as it comes up hopefully you'll be able to see in there that's the actuator turning in there You can see the motor turning and the, the shaft and the threaded rod. This is all set up on a uh, standard Spectrum three channel car radio. I'm holding the camera now to show you some more of the close up uh, detail parts of this thing. Um, up front here is uh, square tubing that just happens to be the right size for the flat side of the motor and so I would call that square tubing the motor mount. Um, it's got a single screw through here that's going through the chassis of the dump truck and it's, it's very loose. The hole is clearance drilled in the chassis so that this thing can move around. It needs to rise up back here. This, as the box lifts, this point here uh, rises and so this thing needs to change the angle it's not you don't want that thing to be nice and solid because it would it would stress or bend something there um, here's one of the motors that I'm using from Servo City this is a 65 rpm economy gear motor um, I have real good luck with these in light duty applications if you were going to be lifting something real heavy I would suggest using the uh, the planetary gear versions which are more expensive but uh, you won't replace them as often um, here you can see the flats on this and that's what's how this motor is mounted in the truck with that square tubing I just machined off one side the fourth side of that tubing that's square aluminum tubing from the hardware store uh, and then I put in a couple of little set screws in through the sides to kind of pinch up against the motor can um, and then the zip ties are holding that from sliding forward I've had trouble with it sliding forward I just need to kind of re-engineer this uh, motor mount but if it slides forward it's going to pinch up against the wires and it was shorten out and then causing trouble um, I made this uh, little coupler to uh, go from the motor shaft to the threaded rod there's a flat that I've ground off on the threaded rod here. I think this is 1024, but I wouldn't swear to that. And I think that's 3 8 uh, Delrin. Um, the, one of the key parts of how this is working is that this is threaded only about a quarter of an inch at the beginning here. And then the rest of this is clearance drilled so that it's much bigger than the threaded rod so that there's no need for this to be threaded all the way just the first quarter inch or so that's where it's lifting and doing all the work is right in there if you had that threaded the whole way first of all it's really hard to thread that far and that deep and then it would just put uh, friction on that threaded rod as it screws into it so when it comes down the threads are only engaged in here and it's just coming up the shaft that way um, this is pretty loose here a um, couple more spacers back in there you might not be able to see them very well there you go um, but let me uh, let me switch it on here and run it up and down a little bit more for you so you can see it go um, the switch on my transmitter is a three-way switch so it's got an up and a down so here it's rotating uh, I guess I'd call that clockwise it's screwing into the Delrin and uh, coming down and then I just switch it and go the other way. The motor reverses, and that's a saber-tooth motor controller. It's a 2x5 controller that I'm using. And uh, that's it. Uh, the one thing I have left that I'm going to do here is put a limit switch on it so that when it comes down, it stops itself. 
otherwise I have to be real careful and, and watch it come down and make sure that I stop it. Otherwise it's going to try to keep threading onto that Delrin and then it, it burns up the motor basically at that point or breaks a gear or something. But uh, that's the application for basically the very same technology in that first video that I did for a DIY linear actuator. That was a much smaller motor and I'll probably use a motor like this uh, when I redo that lock chamber project. But um, I just thought uh, somebody might get uh, some good out of uh, seeing some of the detail here. Talk to you later.